Yo, what up? Okay, now that that's out of the way, uh, tonight I got something pretty cool. Today I got in the mail my wonderful Freckle Shack here. I haven't even opened it up, I haven't played with it yet. Uh, I did order it with a Jelly Belly Custom lens here, and it all arrived together because I actually did somewhat of a group buy with one of my buddies here, and it came with the 3D printed spacers and a new sticker here. Uh, so I've got the LCD install kit and the accessories here, and I want to go ahead and get those installed in a new Game Boy, but first things first, I need to get rid of this little placemat here. I just, I normally use a piece of paper to kind of protect my desk from whatever the heck I'm doing on it or to give me like an easy to an easy surface to clean up but it's also got some important numbers on here so I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out with another piece of scrap paper I have but I'll keep these numbers off to the side because they will be important in just a few minutes here um, so tonight's donor is gonna be this console here I got this on I don't know probably eBay the seller Japan for you uh, it was something like 10 bucks and it didn't work when I got it and it wasn't like oh it didn't turn on didn't work it had a cracked screen and everything I've since repaired it but it's going to be tonight's donor for Freckle Shack and it does work fine of course there's no game in it um, oh and I do want to apologize if I haven't already for any background noise I'm sitting right in front of my 3d printer and it is going right now printing out some printing out a case for another one of my projects here but the Game Boy itself does work fine uh, it's a little quiet I don't know if that's the speaker or the headphone jack or the potentiometer itself but I mean it's not a big deal and I'm not really going to be addressing it tonight as long as it's consistent oh that's fun um, anyway maybe I shouldn't be using this Game Boy just because it's not entirely too consistent well I'm definitely going to be using this shell, that's for sure. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off by taking it apart. This Game Boy doesn't have the original battery cover, unfortunately. That's just an aftermarket. And... But that's quite alright. So to take these bad boys apart, it's just the six tri-point screws around the periphery, four on the outside, and then two hiding with the batteries. I'm going to try not to get these everywhere, but I definitely will. I'm going to pause the video at a few points because there is a step here that involves uh, basically small metal projectiles and I don't want to do that at my desk. But I'll show you what's going on, pause, do it, come back. Okay, so once you got those six out, back comes off pretty easily. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the power switch and the IR lens cover. Just throw those in the back and set this aside for now, uh, just so I don't lose them. Once you've got the back off, You've got three more Phillips screws. And no, that's not going to work. Oop, I just threw that. And then you want to slide this bail up for the screen. It slides up that way. And you can pull the ribbon out. And the whole motherboard should come out just like that. And I will be needing to take the screen out. The easiest way to do it is to just kind of like flex the case. This one's going to come out a lot easier because, like I said, I've replaced this screen before and I just use the same adhesive but that just comes out like that I'm gonna try to get away with leaving that adhesive in there you're probably supposed to remove it but I don't see any cops around 
Anyway. Okay. Now, I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to use a different Game Boy, just in case um, I lied about it. I'm not very uh, confident in that low sound thing, uh, so I'll just leave that for another day to diagnose. I've got another perfectly good donor here. And I'll just swap the motherboards between the two. Oh, before I even do this, I'll take that one screw out. I'm going to double check that this one's working as well. That's fine, that's happy. It's also kind of quiet, but it's not making that same kind of like staticky fading in and out noise the other one was making. I'm sorry, I don't know how well you could have heard the other one, but it wasn't just quiet, it was like fading in and out. That's what was making me nervous. This one's also pretty quiet, but it could just be my loud environment today. Got the air handler running and the 3D printer right behind me. screws out of the way, battery switch, IR window, and off to the side. Ooh, this is actually going to work out pretty nicely because one of my buddies was uh, trying to install Freckle Shack in his Game Boy Color and he was running into a whole slew of issues and his motherboard was a revision number four, so we can see if I run into the same issues. I think we, I think he ended up determining that it was his specific Game Boy itself, and not the mod causing the issue. But it's always fun to have more data. Okay, so that slides up as well. That pops right out. I'm gonna set this aside. Won't be needing it. We'll be using this. All right. So, before I get into any of the mods, I want to take a baseline because I want to see what kind of power usage this thing packs. Uh, so I'm going to take my little crocodile clips here, put my batteries in here, and get my multimeter out. So my multimeter is already on the same setting because that's probably all I ever end up using it for. Um, and we're going to put that in there. Hopefully it doesn't come out. That there. And I'm going to use the same screen that I just pulled out of the clear one. So at idle, no game, we're going to get two baselines here. So this one, and I'm going to use the lower left hand corner here because I'm left handed and it's easier for me. It is, we'll call that, well, we'll just put 58.9 no game. Then we'll take my blue cart here, which is Pokemon Prism. And of course, the volume's all the way up. We'll boot that up. And, ooh, that's going all over the place. Let's just see what it does once the game is loaded up. So just idling right there in 
wherever the heck that was, Caper City. So we'll call that 84.1. Be needing this anymore. And I'll unplug this and set it aside for the time being. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to install Freckle Shack is we need to trim these cart reader pins down here at the bottom. They stick out quite a bit and they will short against the metal housing of the screen. Or actually, I think what happens is, let me just open this up. I think what happens is the motherboard itself ends up bumping up against them and then the screen doesn't sit flat because that's leaning on it and so on and so forth. Okay. So when you open that up, you get two parts. You get the screen itself and then the motherboard. So the motherboard, if I recall correctly, ends up going in here like this. And so yeah, you can see that's right above the uh, pins there, or well, maybe you can't see, but we want to trim those so that it sits flush. I like to use these CHP 170 flush cutters, and you just get those as flush as you can against the board and then trim. I'm going to put my thumb over that because this is going to go flying, and that's one of them. And you need to do all 32. I'm going to go ahead and pause while I do this because these things fly off like a bat out of hell. I highly recommend wearing some safety goggles or something while you're doing this or at bare minimum engage safety squints when you're clipping. Uh, but I'm just going to hold this into the trash can and do it like this to try and contain all the little projectiles. I'll be back in just a moment when this is all trimmed up. Okay, so I've got that all trimmed up. Uh, it was pretty easy. In fact, only one of them actually flew off there and it did end up hitting me in the cheek, but no casualties, we're all good. Uh, so once you've got that all trimmed up, it's recommended that you insulate them anyway. I really don't think you need to, because there's nothing on the back here that could even short on those, but I'm going to do it anyway, um, just because I'd rather do it now and not have to take it apart again. Uh, I'm using some generic polyamide tape or better known as capped on. Highly recommend this stuff over something like electrical tape. Electrical tape will leave a gross residue. It'll start dissolving. It's, despite its name, it's really not the best to use inside electronics. Uh, okay. But I understand it is significantly cheaper than what I'm using right here. Trim that end off. Ooh. And hopefully that's not going to be too visible under there because this is going in a clear shell, but nonetheless. Okay. So once you've got that taken care of, your next step, and this actually isn't in uh, Kyle's video because this is something that kind of happened, you know, with the prototypes. Uh, the original prototype that Kyle used in his video was hand assembled with lower profile capacitors. This one was assembled in a factory by a machine and it turns out they ended up swapping the capacitors that they used. And so the metal portion on the back of the screen sits up against these capacitors and shorts everything out and that's not good. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a big old piece capped on and lay it over this whole top uh, yeah top portion so I've got multiple sizes of capped on I've got the skinny stuff I've got the big stuff uh, something something always come prepared I don't know but I I like using this stuff it's real easy to use uh, it helps if you have fingernails and can uh, pull that up I'm going to lay that, eh, I'll do enough so I can just fold it over. OK. 
Okay. Now you could also, and it's actually probably easier, you could just insulate the back of the screen itself. In fact, you have to do that for a lot of other mods like the Game Boy Advance to Game Boy Advance SP screen. Usually got to insulate that. But this is easy enough and quick enough. Oh, and you're supposed to also insulate these eight pins here. I almost forgot. I already put my uh, tape away. Peel off another little bit. We'll just do the whole back. And it's probably just out of frame. If so, I apologize. But you've seen someone apply tape before. And I don't know if you need to, but I'm going to insulate this side as well with those eight pins. Like I said, rather do it now and have to take it apart again and troubleshoot. Okay. Now that everything possible has been insulated, let's move on to housing portion. So I I believe these actually these instructions actually came with my lens here. These are from Jelly Belly Customs. They're actually pretty cool instructions. They help out. They say uh, the, the important part I think is if your screen doesn't line up you might have to end up trimming the top portion of your casing and then physically pushing your LCD up a little bit. Uh, but they also go on to discuss how there's three different types of shells. So we have the OEM, the aftermarket based on the OEM, and then the new aftermarket shells. These two shells are made from completely different molds. If you flip these over, you can see the difference here. Uh, for starters, there's in here, there's these little high spots. Whereas in here, it's perfectly flush. Uh, if you look at the screw posts as well, those blend in. There's no like plateau or anything. Whereas on this one, there's a little sunken area. Oh, how well you can, oh, there we go. Right around all the screw posts. So these are two different molds that they're made from. Um, this shell and this shell are very similar. In fact, this one looks like it's made from a mold that someone took of the of one of these shells not this one in particular obviously but it looks like someone bought a Game Boy made a mold of it and then made a bunch of these shells from that mold whereas this one looks like an entirely new mold anyway the instructions detail that the install might be a little bit different per you know each shell um, so it's just something to take an advisement you know if you're following the video exactly you know, you might need to make a little bit adjustment to the left or a little bit up or a little bit down or something like that. You know, it might not line up perfectly. Anyway, I'm not going to be using either of these shells for the install. I just had them sitting there. So as far as the install goes, though, you do need to remove this portion of the screen frame. So to do that, I'm going to take my box cutter, just like Kyle did in his video, and I am going to, right at the end, lock that so it doesn't slide again. Then I'm going to cut straight down. Ooh, this is tough plastic. Maybe not. Okay. That's one side. And the other side, that side went a lot better. Then, you just score this down. Just make a couple score lines, both the top and the bottom.
right at the joint. And you should be able to just break that off like that. Okay, so that's good enough. I don't know how particular, how smooth this needs to be. This is my first install here. So we're gonna take my LCD and test fit it. The cool thing about this LCD, and I'll get into this more later, this looks like a kind of transflective LCD. So like normal backlights, they're black in light. This is kind of gray. It looks almost like the, uh, the original here. Almost, not quite. A little bit darker, but nonetheless, okay. So this, I'm guessing, fits in like, oh yeah, the sticky part is still in there, that's right. We'll take those out for now. So this goes just about like that. That looks pretty off-center to me, but I can deal with that. Okay. This is what the 3D printed spacers come in handy for. So you get two of them. You get a thick one and a thin one. So on mine, there's a little bit of extra 3D printing that needs to be trimmed off. The thin one goes on this side to try and space the LCD and the thick one also has a little bit of junk that needs to be trimmed. Okay. And the thick one goes on this side here to try and center the LCD. It's actually super cool of them to include this. I shouldn't have just pressed that down because I forgot to peel off that plastic. <laughs> Good. It's not that stuck down. So, there is a little protective plastic on here. That is very satisfying to peel off. Ooh, and these are a nice matte screen. I like that. Okay. So, line up the top. And then line up the left and the right. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of gentle pressure to try and stick it down because there's a little bit of adhesive in there. Okay. So now take this guy and this bale angles up, it hinges up, and does it go like that? I think it does. Yeah, I remember something about the lines. So, I'm not sure, I think that's fully inserted. I remember Kyle made a big deal about it in his video, but yeah, that looks right. Okay. So you got that inserted, and then you can fold that back like that. And this should sit in the, uh, the little frame area for the LCD. So I'm going to put the start buttons back in because they fell out. Put this back in. Take all the screws that stuck to my speaker out. You know, hang on. Just making sure there were none on the front, too. That goes in there like that. Everything's seated, everything's happy. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put in these three bottom screws. Oop. 
just uh, test, testing my reflexes there by throwing the screwdriver. wires in because one of them looked like it was wandering. Oh, before we finish putting it together, uh, of course, got to put this ribbon back in there. It just kind of folds, insert, and then you can close the bale. Uh, get the multimeter back. And we will see how much this affects our battery life. So that's off. I'm going to flip it over so we can see the screen too. Um, okay, so that's pulling almost exactly 140. Just moved, we'll call it, I guess we'll do that 140.2. Freckle check. And then I'll insert my game here. Volume's still all the way up. I know it's, can't really hear it, but You'll have to trust me that it's on. New game? What the hell? Oh, whew. That was interesting. And I accidentally hit the power switch. I'm gonna move my finger. Maybe this Game Boy needs a little bit of a cleaning. It's not very promising. These batteries also look like they might be a little low. I'm getting some flicker. Continue. Oh, damn it, I did it again. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, or maybe my batteries just died that time. Well, that's not a very fair test. Uh, okay. Uh, well, let me go pop these on the charger and get some more batteries. Then I'll be right back. Okay, so my other my other batteries are actually in my Game Boy here. I only have two sets of rechargeables. I just bought a bunch from Ikea to try and fix that, but uh, I can't use those because they aren't actually charged. These should be charged, hopefully. They're definitely not fully charged though because I've been using them in this Game Boy, and this is that Taobao one which sucks a whole heap of juice. Okay. Hmm. Maybe it wasn't the batteries. Interesting. Is it my power switch? What's going on here? Might be my power switch. Okay, so I'm gonna have to clean this after the test. Ah! Oh, okay. There we go. So that's pulling... 174... 0.5 we'll call it. Okay. 
So I want to discuss what's going on with this screen real quick. I'll turn the light off so you can... I promise it's on. I don't know why you can't see shit. That's so bizarre. Anyway, it's not very bright. I think what's happening is it's a problem with this Game Boy itself. Um, while we were troubleshooting, by we, I mean the Game Boy Discord, I actually wasn't involved at all. I was just reading as everyone was discussing. Um, they were discussion, discussing the issue, and it was when the screen kind of like whites out, because there's these two black bars at the top and the bottom. Uh, when the screen whites out like that and those black bars go white, what's happening is one of two things. One, uh, the frame itself was interrupted, or two, uh, there's a um, the Game Boy is essentially experiencing a brownout. So I'm gonna get my scrap paper here, fiddle on this. As far as frames go, the Game Boy has it's like 160 by 144 or something like that, and that's that's how many pixels it has. But how it works is you have your pixel in the top left corner then the next pixel over is drawn, then the next pixel over, so on and so forth, until you have your whole line. Then it goes back to the second line, starts, and goes so on and so forth, until you have your whole screen. Now, once you've got, uh, I don't know, what is it, 144 of those, your, your frame is done and you're moving on to the next frame. It does this uh, just under 60 times every single second. Um, some manufacturers or, or game publishers, game devs, used a little trick to try and uh, keep the frame rate up, I guess, um, to try and keep the response times a little bit faster. Um, anyway, what they do is they will, your, your game will be going, it'll keep going through the lines, but then an event will happen and the screen needs to change. And instead, you know, to save that, half to save that 120th of a one 120th of a second it'll stop refreshing and then start from scratch going on so forth and so forth uh, that is actually bad practice and nintendo highly recommended that game publishers did not do that one such offender is pokemon pinball here uh, whenever it swaps from the top or the lower screen that's exactly what it's doing it's stopping the frame data in the middle of a stopping the line data in the middle of a frame to start a new frame and when the brings me back to the point I was starting at uh, when the borders go white that's what Freckle Shack's doing that's one of two things um, but in this case I'm thinking it's power related because my power LED was kind of flickering uh, wasn't doing too hot and you saw it reset those couple times. So I'm gonna try cleaning it up. It looks like I've already been into this Game Boy before, so I don't know how good that's going, how much good that's gonna do. But we'll try it out anyway. Another issue is that it could be the capacitors that need replacing. These things don't last forever, and these Game Boys are going on, you know, 21 years. This is 1998 on the board. Um, and this one in particular is an early revision. By the way, there were something like 11 revisions for the Game Boy Color. If you are, if you have the choice, I highly recommend you get a later revision for modding and not an earlier revision. The original one that was in this clear shell was a revision number three. This one in particular is a revision number four. Is there so much solder? But I think that's what most of my Game Boys are, threes and fours. So much for a 15 minute install, right? Okay. Oh, you know what? I think that was on backwards. Shoot, I can't remember now. That's not good. 
I know which way it came off. I'm just trying to think of which way it's supposed to go on. I'm just getting rid of some of this extra solder. Okay. okay. So this power switch in particular already looks pretty clean. I'm going to try cleaning it anyway. What's the worst that could possibly happen? Just using isopropyl alcohol on a cotton swab here. Yeah, that's already as clean as it's going to get. I'm going to clean off that flux too while I'm here. Two little wipers. I'm trying my best not to knock either of them out of the plastic. But I don't think I cleaned these the first time around. They're solid black and now they are not solid black. I think I just cleaned the same side twice. Flip that around. Oh no, I got both sides. Okay. Now, I'm going to try and bend these up a little to make better contact. That's probably a little bit extreme, but it's going to work. I'll turn that light back on. Yeah, my other motherboard has that on the other way, so I think this one was on backwards. That might have been part of the issue. I'm also going to try bending it a little. Just goes to show, just because you have a soldering iron doesn't mean you know what the heck you're doing. my batteries. Oh, here we are. Somehow tangled this up. Okay. so I'm sure it's not me. Yeah, see, it's still doing it. Hmm. And it's working now. I'm just going to turn the meter on so you can see what it's pulling. Is that lower than before? 174. No, it's about where it was. So I don't think that helped out at all. I'm thinking this Game Boy might need some new capacitors, so we'll do that down the line. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and finish putting it back together. Finish this video up. Alright, so 
put this lens back in here. And the switch. see how it goes together. You know, it just occurred to me that it might just be the specific game that does that. When you hit continue, uh, as far as that, that screen blank. Now it might not be, you know, it might be that my batteries are low too. But it could just be the game as well as the batteries. Okay, that, that. Those are all right. whatever. And get my batteries out of my holder. Try the game one more time just for shits and giggles. Yeah, it did it again that time. Hmm. Try Pokemon Pinball. Oh, I know why this Game Boy is so quiet. There's a sticker over the speaker. <laughs> oh well. Ooh, so yeah. You can see it takes a little while. You can't even see. Like the ball should have been at the top and then fallen down, but it already appeared at the bottom of the frame. Makes it a little bit hard to react. Oh, okay. Okay, that one was on me. One thing is there is a battery in this cart, so I can feel when the ball is bouncing off something. And it is doing quite a bit of bouncing while my screen is still trying to keep up. Uh, I guess that this is one of the hazards of... Uh, being an early adopter for tech. This is, of course, the first generation Freckle Shack. But, uh, yeah, see, it was already down there by that time. Okay, anyway, we're done with that. Uh, so if you're a big pinball fan, this probably isn't the mod you want to do. Um, but moving beyond that, to complete the install here, I already peeled the sticker off and I stuck it on this frame just for now uh, because I want to use my cool new sticker here, my Ben Ven sticker from Jelly Belly, I think it is. Well, no, because this came with the lens, or with the uh, screen, not with the lens. And I'm not going to be putting this lens on at the moment because within the next few days I have one more screen mod coming in the mail and I want to try and give them all a fair shake and since this is the only Game Boy I have that I actually bought a lens for I'm gonna to wait to uh, put that lens on until I get them all compared next to each other uh, I can tell you well 
maybe I can't because I only have one set of batteries right now, um, that the Taobao Game Boy is quite a lot brighter. But just, I mean, looking at that, you could see this one's on a black screen that's like kind of gray. I think this one's going to do a lot better in sunlight, which quite frankly is my preferred, one of my preferences when it comes to Game Boys. Uh, I like to take walks during the day, you know, like when I'm on break at work or something like that. And hey, I like to bring a Game Boy with me. And it's fun to play, and sometimes my walks bring me in direct sunlight. So this might be my preference, but I've got one more mod in the mail, and then I've got my AGS 101 Game Boy in the other room. And uh, we'll put them all head to head and we'll see what happens. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. And for those sticking this, sticking this far with me, I want to show you something pretty cool that, well, I think is pretty cool because I haven't seen it before. This is, or was, a small container of hot water. Now it's just a small container of water. And this is one of the uh, packing peanuts that my Joey came with, or my Freckle Shack came with, rather. Uh, I just think it's pretty cool. These peanuts are biodegradable and dissolve in water. These are, I think, made from, like, rice or something. I don't know. I, ha I haven't tried one. I try not to just stick random things that came in the mail in my mouth. But, I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool. Best part of Freckle Shack right here. No, I'm kidding. You can see it dissolving. Now it's breaking up there. Anyway, I hope you all have an excellent day, and uh, thanks for sticking with me.